And um, in April that year, I uh, I couldn't go on anymore. I, I I said to my boss, I I I need to, I can't come. I'm ill, and nobody knew what was going on. And um, after m- much time and and things, I had an autoimmune disease. So um, working was not. That was just absolutely not a, an option anymore. And the only thing that I could do was take a shower during the day and even that was sometimes yeah that was what i could do and that was it so this is one of these unusual podcast interviews that now and again you will hear on the share your story podcast and i personally i'm interested in the alternative let's call it medical or healing world because i studied it for many years myself i don't practice it Um, but I have the knowledge and the understanding of it. So Esther, that you're about to listen to, and you just heard her say that she was very poorly, she had an autoimmune disease. She healed herself using the techniques that she learned at a very, very young age. And through that process, we're able to get her life back together again. It's a fascinating story to learn how people get involved in that, especially with her, because she got involved in kind of alternative healing at a very, very young age. Energy is something that we don't really understand because we can't see it, touch it, feel it, smell it, um, hear it, taste it even. But everything is energy. And we, we actually go in quite deep talking about energy, about the things that we might be skeptical about or the things that have been proven by scientists. It's it's a fascinating interview. I hope you're going to enjoy it, but also listen to Esther's story, how she's been able to overcome her illness using energy healing techniques for herself. Um, Fascinating, enjoy. Staying Alive UK, share your story. Welcome to the Share Your Story podcast, Esther. How are you today? Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks for inviting me. Well, really, really welcome to the podcast and a fellow Dutch person like myself, (laughs) which I'm delighted to meet you and your Dutch is definitely better than my Dutch. Um, Yeah, your English is better than mine, that's for sure. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, we're probably on par then, but you speak other good languages as well. My, um, We'll come to what other languages you speak to in a bit. Um, so before we do, because I'm really fascinated and I'd love to hear your story, is uh, let's get started with you telling us a little bit about your personal life. Uh, where were you born? A bit about your education where you now live, have you moved around, um, and then we'll just take it from there. So over to you, okay, Esther. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, I was born in the middle of Holland in a very small place, which is called Bern. Yeah. And um, there's a funny story we might uh, we might want to get into later about that, that place and something that happened to me in Paris, but that's for later. And um, okay. I was born there in 1977 so i'm 42 now and um i lived there until i was 35 but it was always my dream since i was 11 to move to france i came to france for the first time when i was 11 right and i came here and i live here now and i thought this is where i need to be wow and that feeling always kept yeah being around me until the day that i decided to go Mm. So that's a bit about where I've been living. Now, I've been living in several places in in Holland, two places in Holland and several places in France. Right. And, um, yeah. Did did you, you did your education in the Netherlands? Yeah, I did a tourism school. Right. And I worked at a travel agency, not so long, by the way. But um, um, and then I did a lot of other education of the work that I'm doing now, right. also in Holland. Right. And um, yeah, so I was. Everything started there for years and years. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, so you did, did you know what you wanted to be when you were, you know, doing high school and things like that or? No, I always had the idea that I wanted to help people. It's yeah. a very common thing you hear with sensitive people. They want to do something for humanity. And I had that same inner feeling. Yeah. But I didn't know what it was. And when I was, I think, 16, something like that, I was writing a lot for Amnesty International. Mm. And I thought maybe I can work for them. They were located in Amsterdam. I know I knew where they were. And, and I thought maybe that's an option. But what do you do then? What do you actually do in your daily life if you work for an organization like that? And do I feel fulfilled? And do mm -hmm. I feel like I really contribute in that way? And when I was 16, am I right? 17, I needed to choose in what direction I wanted to go with school. Yes. And somebody in my class was going to tourism school. And I thought, well, um, <laughs> honestly, I thought, well, that's not too long. It's not too complicated, probably. So I can do that. And because I was constantly working towards what I truly wanted, although I didn't know what that was yet. So I was making some kind of strategic move on my head, like, okay, let's go in that direction. And um, I like traveling. I love learning about countries, and, uh, culture, history, things like that. So that seemed like a very good choice. And it has been because it has helped me to know a lot about um, yeah, countries and where it's located and, and things like that. So I did that and I worked at a travel agency, I think, for one year. Yes. But the jobs are very low paid. It's a very high-pressured job. Um, it was still not really what I wanted, but I still didn't know what it was that I wanted. And then I worked in um, for a telecom company. Yes. And in that, I was around 21 at that time, 22, 21. And I was starting to do yoga and I just picked up the yellow pages and a name popped up and I thought, oh, this is a nice woman to go to. Let's try that. <laughs> and then I was thinking, is this what I want? And it still didn't feel completely right. And then she told us that she was going to China for an intense um, yeah, immersion of Qigong, which is Chinese yoga, you can say. And in the split second, she told me, I thought, and this is it. And mm. this is going to change my life. Really? So she went. Yeah. Yeah. I also re remember that I had that feeling. Yeah. I, it was a big yes. It was like the France feeling. Yes. <laughs> that direction. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Incredible. And, and so... So that happened whilst you were working for the travel agent and you were doing yoga like in the evening or the weekend or something. Yeah, yeah. I was I was in that time I was already working for the telecom company. Oh, the telecom, sorry. Was, yeah, the telecom. Yeah, yeah. Which was a bit the same that you work I was earning a lot more money, mm. but I was still making a lot of hours and you're just yeah. working um yeah, you're peep off for for somebody else not yes. doing what is in your heart so um i thought that needs to change and did you so when you when you went oh i want to learn this how do you say it qigong qigong yes qigong you said i really want to do that that's a, it's a big yes how did you then go about in terms of finding out about it and actually learning it? Well, that took, I think, at least one and a half other year before um, I actually started to do it. That means that my yoga teacher was going to China for a month. Yes, yes. And there was a big center there at that time. And there were 7,000 people uh, doing that form of Qigong on a daily basis with 700 uh, teachers. Wow. And um, China was closed back then for Europeans. So it was in 1997. Right. And um, so you, you, you basically needed to have all kind of papers. You couldn't just go there. It was not so easy as it is today. 
Mm. So it was all kind of for us as, as students of my yoga teachers was all, oh, she's going to China far away. And, um, and also the whole feeling of far away is different than it is now because the use of internet, we didn't have internet back then. I mean, I'm still very young in my mm. own mind, but it was a different time than, than it is right now. Totally. So she was going to China to that center, came back with pictures and a lot of stories. And then one of the other women who was going with her um, came back as well and started to teach it because they had the permission to teach that form of Qigong. So I was um, studying with my yoga teacher and the other woman, uh, Patricia from Walstein, who has created the Chineng Qigong Institute uh, in Holland. Um, Patricia was starting to teach as well. And there were a lot of people asking her, but can we become a teacher like you are yourself? Yeah. And then it took her some time to organize and to, yeah, to see how to, to do things like that. Mm. And then eventually she started an education. And um, I was the second uh, wave of students that she was uh, teaching. So I was, let's say, from the start that it came to Europe, I was yeah, familiar with it. Mm. And um, so after one and a half year of just practicing with my yoga teacher, I was doing, I was starting the education uh, that Patricia was creating. And um, yeah, here we go. Um, uh, another 20 years later, because it's, it's uh, 20 years ago now. Oh, wow. It's fast. <laughs> yeah, it goes so fast. But you, yeah. you embraced this at a very young age, though, didn't you? Yes, I was, I was the youngest student. Mm, of I'm Patricia. Not yes, yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah. yeah, because it doesn't normally. Well, I mean, it can do. More younger people are getting into these kind of things, I'm sure, but usually, it doesn't happen until you're kind of at least past twenty five when the when the brain is fully developed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Okay. Yeah, I think I always, in that way, was a bit different than other people, always much of a reader and a bit of a loner at, at, at some point. Yes. Not completely, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can relate to that. And do you think, was there any influence from your family, mum and dad, or? Um, yes and no. It's a bit of a contradiction because my father studied um um parent now how do you say that parapsychologie parapsychologie we say in dutch which is psychology that studies the unnatural so i was a bit familiar from his side of the family and he was studying that and i was going with him to his studies right, that's right. to get the bit of a loner part in me that everybody was studying and there was a, a very loving jewish teacher uh, guiding the whole situation and I loved being there I was around seven but on the other hand um, there was also a bit of a yeah bit, bit old-fashioned way of looking uh, at Christianity in life mm. so it was promoted or I was raised with it at one hand and on the other hand it was not something that we embraced let's say as a family no mm. But your father, you said he was involved in psychology. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there must be, and not a direct influence, but a subconscious influence in, in the interest of, you know, the human mind or... Yeah, probably, yeah, yeah. I yeah. never thought about it like that, but yeah. Mm, there must yeah. be, because that... Influences like that are very subtle. I mean, the thing is, what I I was so I'm the youngest of four kids, and my father was in oh, banking, yeah. and both my older brothers went into banking, but mm -hmm. I had no interest to go into banking at all. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, they're not in there anymore, or not a little bit. One of them is a little bit, but I just didn't want to do that. I was like. It was almost like a rebel, you know, you just didn't want to <laughs> do what your brothers were doing type of thing. 
but there were other influences, I guess. And sometimes it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be influences. You know, you could have you could have literally come into this planet already pre-programmed for the route that you were going down. Um, well, I think that's the case for me. Yes, yeah. yes. I know that that's the case for me because I always know very clearly what direction to go or when it's a big yes. <laughs> a yeah, big yes. Yeah. So with, yeah. the, with the Qigong, with Patricia setting up effectively a school to teach this, yeah. correct? Yeah. So you then learned to do this just for yourself or did you learn to become a teacher then? I was already starting to um, learn how to become a teacher. Right. Because you just have to follow a lot of classes, um, both in theory as in practice. Mm. So, yeah, basically um, the education was set up in a way that you could either, fo let's say, follow uh, three days just for yourself, but you could also follow the same days and then become a teacher. Right. But as a teacher, you needed to fulfill certain um certain things that if you would do it for yourself, you maybe wouldn't. And one of those things, which is funny, was called a gong. And a gong is a period of 100 days in a row mm. in which you do one specific exercise. Right. So um, that is Whoa. to develop the energy flow in a specific area of the body or in general, because the basic exercise is, let's say, like an um, overall acupuncture um, treatment. Mm -hmm. So you needed to, to do then one exercise for a hundred days in a row. And if you would forget about it, yeah, that was very sad, but then you just needed to restart. Oh my uh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I Can mean, you imagine how much fun that people waking up at, at, at let's say, uh, half past 12 and then saying, yeah, uh, but I, I count it as still the day that I can do my practice or yes. doing it when you come home from having a drink somewhere and you think, oh, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I'm going to do it now. Yes. Yeah. And how yeah. long, but there was, how, yeah. How long would an exercise take for that one exercise? How long would it? Yeah, that depended. It was between, uh, 15 minutes or maybe even 55. Okay, wow. I mean, 100 days, that's tough, isn't it? But it's some fantastic discipline. Yeah, but the funny thing is I was, I'm a very, I have a big determination that's just mm. in my blood. So, um, yeah, then I just started it. And yes, I did quit a couple of times. Um, right. Or that you just simply forgot about it. But yeah, I think it has given me so much discipline in my life and also the uh, determination and the courage to go on because if you do something 100 days, you have days that you feel epic and you've got, got days that you feel low. So mm, mm. Um, you learn to just go on and not be distracted if something goes bad. That doesn't mean that I, I'm that disciplined because most definitely am I an emotional person and very sensitive, so I can be distracted by my own emotions, definitely. But you pick yourself up more easily and you have a, your wire to continue. Yeah. Um, and we had a funny form which with a hundred smiles, but the smiles were not completed. So when you did your practice, then you could... could um, sign how, how or or design how do you say that the the actual smile that yeah the you can smile. draw draw the yeah draw that's the word in English yeah the mouth either sad mouth yeah, or happy yeah, mouth yeah <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah. um you could print that out and then see your in what day you uh you were uh, or what day you were at right and it was funny that there were even days like around thirty three and eighty eight that people usually qu were quitting. Mm. <laughs> incredible Incre that's an incredible story and so i have a question for you in relation to the monetary reward because you mentioned earlier in the conversation you know working for that telecoms company the travel agent it was exchanging your time for money um uh, mm -hmm. being very pressurized and everything else so mm -hmm. you obviously I mean, you were still quite young. I don't know if you were still living with your parents when you were doing all of this. But 
was the no, idea? I, I lived on my own quite for Dutch uh, rules quite fast. I think I was yes. 19. Yes, yeah. very quick, yes. Um, and did you earn enough money from, from the teaching? No, no, no. It's a completely, it went completely uh, different. That means I was starting the education in February when I was 23. Right. And um, in April that year, I, uh, I couldn't go on anymore. I, I, I said to my boss, I, I, I need to, I can't come, I'm ill. And nobody knew what was going on. And mm. um, after m much time and, and things, I had an autoimmune disease. Right. So um, working was not, that was just absolutely not a, an option anymore. And the only thing that I could do was take a shower during the day. And even that was sometimes, yeah, that was what I could do. And that was it. Mm. So um, how can I say? Yeah, it took five years to come out of that situation. They said that that wouldn't be possible. But I said, I literally came home and I said to the universe, okay, um, wait a split second here. Um, this is not how we're going to do things. And there are literally two options. Or I become healthy and I will do absolutely everything that it takes or I commit suicide because I won't go on like this. Mm. I was living like a, like a plant. And that was not what I had in mind for my life. So I'm a bit of a rebel myself. I thought, well, and I didn't have a life. So there was not much to say goodbye to, mm. but I was willing to fight, which I did. Um, but um, so teaching was not, um, was absolutely not possible, but no. teaching was like, yeah. No, no, carry on. Yeah, no, yeah. no, teaching, teaching wouldn't have been possible because like, you were ill. No, it wouldn't have. No, no, but it was the motivation um, to keep going. So yeah. when I was starting to feel a bit more energy, um, I was writing my classes already with the idea, okay, when I come out of this situation, um, at least this is ready, we can start. So, and I used, of course, this form of Qigong to support me tremendously in this, uh, yeah difficult period of my life and did you and was there something about the qigong and we, and we need to go into this in a bit more detail obviously because we haven't explained to our listeners what it is <laughs> uh, you know, but, no sorry for that no yeah. that's okay that's okay but i think it's quite interesting to keep them listening <laughs> so they kind of get yeah i want to hear what this is um but so we keep the suspense going for a bit longer um, <laughs> did you have to do more Qigong to help you with your illness or was it something specific you had to do in order to help your, your recovery from your illness? Um, I used Qigong for both. Right. So when the first level of this Chinese yoga is specifically to have more energy. And I had a big, I didn't have any energy left. So doing this um, was giving me some air during the day or this in combined with mental power, I went out for dinner sometimes because I always um, was aware of the fact that you have to take care of yourself on many levels. If you, you'd better go out for dinner and pay the price for the next coming days. But then you've been out there, you've been in society, you've been feeling like normal, then not go out at all. So mm. I used, for instance, uh, the exercises to have a bit of energy and to actually enjoy right. what I was doing. Right, got it. Yeah. Yeah, and later when I was... Um, Cured, cured is something completely different in my opinion than being healed. Right. But when I was cured, I used it at the second level to build up my muscles because I had been in a bed for almost five years. Wow. So then, of course, I, I didn't thought about it back then, and that was a good thing. But I, uh, of course, you need to rebuild your your muscles and your your strengths and, and things like that. So mm. I used the second level to open my body more and to, yeah, to, um, 
to recover as well. Yeah. So I'm um, okay. So now might be a good time to explain for our listeners what qigong is, and because what you described to me then is how I would translate it is that the first level that you used was almost to give you life force vital life force yeah, to keep going definitely. yeah to keep going definitely. and to stay alive and then once you were able to ha having given at least that vital life force you were then able to uh, subsequently go to level two and build the strength up in your body through your muscles and other areas yeah. um so in in it doesn't matter how long you take to explain it but in in simple plain language could you explain what qigong is and maybe a little bit about its history um mm -hmm. as well and you know i have heard about it definitely i I don't know really, I don't really understand it. I mean, I understand a lot of kind of energy healing myself, but I don't understand mm -hmm. Qigong per se. So it'd be really interesting as, as you're a bit of an expert and you've been doing it for so long, um, tell the listeners what, what it's about. Well, Qigong, you can say is Chinese yoga. Or yes. um, you can say those are movements that they do in China and they use energy. And you can say that um, now we're getting a bit deeper into it. But the Chinese say that everything is energy and information. Everything. Mm -hmm. And um, the kind of information which is combined with the energy dictates whether it's a table or it's it's you or me of course you and i have a soul so that, that's a big difference but if you bring it back everything is energy and information yes and um the chinese say that that energy um, moves through the body through channels which are called meridians yes and if you practice those practices then you stimulate that the energy flows freely, freely through those uh, meridians. And where most forms of Qigong, I will go into that a bit more later, but where most forms of Qigong uh, focus on um, letting the energy flow inside you, is this particular form designed to also consciously use the energy around you and to make sure that you can even, um, with your mind, connect to the most, um, Chinese call it primeval qi, the most purest qi there is. So if I repeat that, because it's a lot of information. It's okay. But yeah. what you basically do is, uh, with your conscious mind, you say, okay, I want to connect to the most purest energy there is. And then there is a technique of doing that. And then you're going to use the practices and visualizations in order to get that energy exchange. So you make sure that you connect to that energy field. You let a bit of your own energy go. You don't focus on that, but that just happens. And then you make sure that you get a lot of positive new energy into your system. Mm. Um, and the reason why you so consciously do that is let's say I wouldn't focus on the primeval, the pure energy, but just on energy around me. Um, since everything is energy and information, maybe that energy is not so positive. So you can imagine we're not aware of things, but sometimes you run into a room and you, you think, hmm, what is this? Mm -hmm. And then with your eyes, you look at the people and you see they had a fight because somebody's still crying or whatever. But you noticed it already in a different way, and that's the energy. So let's say you're going to practice there. You don't want to get in, into to observing that energy. No, you want to observe the pure energy that is out there. So that is one of the big differences between other forms of Qigong, which are also perfect. Yes. It's just what you feel the most attracted to. Um, but that's the difference between other forms of Qigong and this form. And Usually, Qigong is designed to prevent you 
from becoming ill. Right. And in China, the whole vision on health is a bit different than in the West. Um, but they say it's better to stay healthy instead of making sure that you become healthy again. And so originally, Qigong is designed to make sure that you're healthy. And that's not completely true because you can say that Qigong is a like a family name. And then you've got five types of Qigong. And one of them is our Buddhism forms. Uh, you've got Taoism forms, Confucianism forms. Um, you've got martial arts. And you've got, and now we're talking about, uh, let's say our quote unquote Qigong. Um, you've got Qigong that is specifically designed for well-being. Right. And Qineng Qigong, the Qigong form that I teach, is designed uh, not only for well-being, but also to get you back on track if you're already ill. Because in China, the center that they created with this was for people who were already ill, which is a um, quite new way of looking at things. So the center in itself was really revolutionary because first of all, it was for a big mess, which is new because usually Qigong wasn't uh, teached in that way. And um, the approach was different because people were already unhealthy so they use this in order to become healthy again Got it. and they did and it for eight hours a day wow and and you so you mentioned the word just really quickly which is your form of qigong you said qinang yeah qinang qigong which is spelled as c-h-i or z-h-i it's spelled in two different right uh ways and Neng is N uh, N E N G. Right. And Qigong? How's that? Oh my, in English. Q I G O N G. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, 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 I obviously have seen it written. And because you say Qi and not Q, um, yeah. yeah. You don't say because the Q would be Qi, wouldn't it be Qigong? Uh, but we say Qigong. Um, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, yeah, and obviously the chi neng, the chi in front of the neng, C H I, mm -hmm. is is uh, energy, isn't it? it? Stands for energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And neng stands for potential. Oh, okay. And qi kong is like, well, basically, qi kong means to master something. Oh, wow. So so, oh, you so you're say, mastering the potential of energy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. Yeah. So I'm I'm <laughs> I studied kinesiology for three years. I don't know if you know. Yeah. Yeah. So we we learned about the meridians very much so, and uh, there's something called Touch for Health, which mm -hmm. looks at all the kind of meridians. And of course, the meridians is something that people don't really know about in the western world that much um you know doctors don't talk about it i mean people know about it but they don't understand it and i always refer mm -hmm. to the meridians as your kind of electrical wiring in the body mm -hmm. you can see it like that yes yeah because the energy the, travels yeah. down the energy travels in those meridians uh, people are familiar with acupuncture, but they don't understand what actually happens. And the the most interesting thing I find with acupuncture is where the the, the needles go. They go into kind of little hollow things in your skin, and mm -hmm. you know touch those meridian lines in your body. Um, mm -hmm. And that's incredible. So any any listeners, if you want to really experience your meridians go for acupuncture because that's the best oh, yeah. way to understand <laughs> mm -hmm. where your meridians are and what they do or you know what they can do for you um i'm, I'm just kind of sharing because i i think this is such a fascinating part of our body that people really don't understand that much about no because we're not being teached correct we're not being showed how things work or that we're at the base vibrational beings. Mm. We're not teached how to deal with our energy or emotions, you can say, is also energy. 
or even thoughts or energy. We're not learned anything around that subject. No. So how can we know? The only funny thing is that we're talking um, quite in a theoretical way already. And when I teach, I usually uh, don't go into that that deep. Of course, you talk about meridians and acupuncture mm. points, which mm. you touch with Yin and Qigong, or which you work with, or Dantian areas, which are three basic energy centers located in the body where the energy is stored or uh, it's a bit like the chakras in in uh, hell in india they say you've got seven energy centers and we call them chakras yes and in in uh, china they say uh, you've got three centers and we call them dantians but basically once i've explained a bit about it i i leave it a bit behind because i think um i always bring it back as well to how do you feel? Not even what do you feel? Because people might not feel anything, mm -hmm. but they feel good after doing the practice. So I'm, I'm always bringing it back to, okay, um, this is what it can do energetically. So what it can do for your energy. But how do you feel after you've done it? Mm. And what does it do for your body? Because there's also the physical body and it has an influence on your physical body. For instance, moving in a certain way stimulates your lymphatics how do you say the lymphatic stream yeah lymphatics is good yeah yeah you don't have yeah. to say stream but yeah lymphatics yeah. oh yeah you, <laughs> lymphatics so that is let's say a physical thing that happens when you practice a certain practice mm. and we all know why that is good or maybe we don't always know that but then i can explain it so i try to look at it from a really um um, earthly quote unquote view, like mm -hmm. to bring it, like to look at the both sides. Okay, it can do this for, for your energy, mm -hmm. but it does this for your body as well. So it can be for everybody, not only for people who feel related to energy work or I want to get it out of the um, mystic yes. thing it can have. Yes. And bring it yeah. back to normal life. It's, it is. That sounds really interesting, and I, I, I guess there are two types of people around. There are the ones that are more scientific that want the explanation in detail to mm -hmm. almost justify to themselves to say, "Well, this this works or this doesn't work because this is the this is what happens physically." I guess. And then there's others that are more non-scientific, let's call them, maybe call them spiritual, but let's call non-scientific, <laughs> who, who are actually not that worried about the science behind it, the physical things that it represents, but are more, more in tune with the feeling side of it, you know, Mm -hmm, so I guess mm -hmm. not everybody can, I, I guess, I'm agreeing with you. I'm a tiny bit contradicting it in terms of people saying, well, I don't know how I feel. You know, when you say, well, how are you feeling? Well, I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and in fact, Liz, Liz won't mind me mentioning this. We, um, my wife and I w were invited very kindly to Liz's workshop. Uh, mm -hmm. performance of, of her project that she's doing called Scintilla. And she did a little bit of Qigong to get us started, the audience to yeah. get us, you know. Yeah, was it last Friday? Or yes, yes. Yeah, she told me about it, yeah. Yeah, she did a little bit. But it was interesting, the reaction to the audience. Some people stood up and did it. Some people stayed sitting. And some people didn't do anything. They just watched. And they didn't took, mm -hmm. take part. And I would call those are the scientific people sitting, <laughs> sitting down, not doing anything. <laughs> um, um, yeah, but it's so funny that that because of course I feel what you mean, and I know people who just don't get it and then go back to science. But if mm. you want to go back to science, okay, they, there is a science that's called quantum physics. Yes, and that explains um, a lot of things, things that I cannot even understand myself. <laughs> So but, um, in, it doesn't explain very well. <laughs> maybe it doesn't explain very well, but on the other hand, it does. So um, 
yeah, you know, yeah, what it, what it, first of all, there is a whole science in the West for a hundred years already, which is called quantum physics. And second of all, um, uh, what is science anyway? Science, people don't know how science works, but science is having a statement and then go prove that statement. So, yeah. It's, I hope I, do, I, I hope I don't in, insult anybody, but yeah. No. The, no, of course not. Don't worry. If people are easily insulted, they won't be listening to this podcast, so it's not a problem. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, we, I think I, I agree with you. Quantum physics does explain a lot. However, it's really difficult to understand quantum physics because yeah. quantum physics is all about energy, right? So at the particle level, at the atomic level, when you look at quantum physics, all you can see is energy. There is nothing else, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So at, at the atomic level, if, if everything is energy, then we are energy, then this particular routine, Qigong routine, is about moving energy. Um, mm -hmm. And in fact, we do this most of our days with everything, you know, you're moving energy, but at least this is a focused way of using energy with a particular purpose or outcome yeah. um, mm -hmm. that you can measure, as you're saying, you can measure by how you're feeling um, or not, how, you know, either good or bad type of feeling. Yeah, and you can also... Um measure it but you can actually feel it you can even see it mm. um but that's maybe a bit yeah out of reach if you're just new to the subject but um the feeling part is more that nine out of ten people practicing feel good about after doing it and yes. then they come back to me and then they say yeah but i haven't felt anything in my hands like you say or if i haven't felt that or yes and then i bring them back to okay but did you feel good after the practice yes okay well then keep doing it <laughs> but of course you can feel energy i also am a reconnective healing practitioner maybe we come to that later because yes. it also had to do with my recover uh, recovering but yes you can feel energy or you can feel frequencies most definitely mm. but for the people who don't feel it but are interested in trying to do something if you feel good after doing it perfect mm. and if you don't feel good with qigong um always ask your teacher or your uh, acupuncture practitioner because sometimes you can have like in homeopathic uh, medicine you can have a counter reaction which means that the stock energy is going to flow and it can give you um um yeah some some even becoming more tired and then mm. you think yeah but i'm doing it to feel more energized yeah but let's say the old stock energy is starting to flow and that gives some kind of a reaction or a muscle that you didn't know was hurting because your body has adjusted to that let's say um wrong mm. body position mm. and you don't have any trouble and then you start doing qigong and you actually are going to feel that you th that there's something blocked in your back yeah and you didn't have pain before but then there comes the the good communication with somebody that you explain okay you can have some kind of pain but that's a two reaction you can even have emotional reactions that you think huh mm. what is this mm. i didn't mm. feel these emotions in a long time yeah but no. it's it's coming up to the surface so it can get out of your system. I even had, I had asthma when I was a child. I even had doing a practice that I felt my asthma um, not coming back, but I hadn't, I felt like, oh, I feel that same oh, tension in my lungs, but I knew what it was. So I wasn't afraid and I could just work through it. But yeah. communication is very important, of course. And just saying it, I always say to people, I'm not a doctor. I don't, I can't take responsibility. See your doctor. Um, Qigong or reconnective healing doesn't mean that you shouldn't do or follow up on any medical advices. I'm just saying that to be sure that people get that. Yeah. Um, and also to bring them back, because if you work with me, you sign something that you're responsible yourself. But it's not only let's say, quote-unquote, for my own protection, because 
I don't know how that works in law. Maybe I'm not protected at all. Mm. But it's also to make people aware of the fact that they are responsible for themselves. And then later, maybe that they even start to see that you can also take the responsibility that you don't necessarily need to take in what other people are saying, that you can always go back to yourself and say, hey, how do I actually feel about this? Yes. Regardless of whether it's anybody, mm. you can go back to yourself and feel, hey, how do I, how do I actually, what is my own opinion about this subject? Mm. Mm. And then you go back to um, becoming who you truly are. Yes. Because you come keep coming back to, hey, what is my my pure yeah, pure what is pure, but what is my opinion about it? And do I feel mm. good about it? Mm. Oh well, if you feel good, perfect. And if not, then change it. Brilliant. So v very good advice. <laughs> very good advice. And okay, so you mentioned something about reconnective healing. Um, do you want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, I when I started doing Qigong, I had the idea I want to do something else as well, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what it was. So I was starting to look and search and I didn't find it. And um, then later, a, a, a Qigong colleague of mine was doing reconnective healing. Reconnective healing is a form of healing in which you uh, don't touch the person. You don't treat any symptoms. You, um, you just receive let's say high frequencies so i'm a reconnective healing practitioner which means that i'm connected to the reconnective healing frequencies um which are yeah you can say very high vibrational um uh, it's high vibrational energy so to speak yes and me as a practitioner um i'm not a channel so it doesn't go through me i'm more like a catalyst i'm i'm present and because i'm present the yeah the energy can come through you can call it like that and then you offer as a practitioner the high frequencies to the person which can be either in presence in your uh, own space so to speak or you can even do it from the distance because there basically is not much of a difference uh, and most definitely not in result or experience um, experiencing a session and what reconnective healing does is it somehow brings you back to your you can say an original blueprint and if you bring those energies to somebody it creates balance and ease and within the word ease you can say that the disease has fallen off so it's a completely um, different way of looking at everything because you bring those frequencies to somebody and it's like that person is a bit uplifted. It's somehow of an upgrade of the whole system. And then if the person is in balance, then automatically, uh, yeah, the disease can fall away. Um, now, you never can guarantee anything. And we always say that whatever can happen, happens for that person. Um, and that's because you simply don't know. So somebody, um, ha although we don't treat symptoms, people usually come in with a physical complaint or emotional mentally uh, problem. But let's say somebody has migraine. And you would think, okay, something is, is happening in the brain. But maybe uh, the migraine is issued in um, a vertebrae that is stuck or it has to do with stress, which has to do with a certain belief system of the person. Um, so in other words, migraine can have many, many different uh, elements, can be hormonal. You see what I mean? So maybe somebody is doing a reconnective healing session, comes in for migraine um, and offer sometimes a couple of weeks you just find out hey i'm allergic to that kind of food and then i got migraine now we all know that migraine and food is also combined and you probably had found that out sooner but it's just to give an example of how reconnective healing work it's some kind of an upgrade and whatever can happen for that person in that moment 
happens. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. So, so this one is more vague, isn't it, than the Qigong, I think. Um, so. Yeah, I yeah, you I can understand that people experience it like that. Yes. Mm, yeah. Mm. Because I mean this is I, I what I found over the years is that I mean it's because we're in a physical body, right? And we can mm -hmm. touch things with our with our physical body, so we can feel mm -hmm. things and we can see things and hear things and taste things and smell things. Um, and only because of those senses, we can make sense of the world around us and know that things, well, we think things are real then, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? <laughs> but, but you can't see um, energy unless, no. you, unless you go and look in a massive microscope, you know, and you can see that actually at the atomic level, it is just energy. And you can tell people about quantum physics, which you can't really explain and you can't understand because nothing is st straightforward in quantum physics either. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it, it, becomes, it becomes very, very difficult to say to people, well, I can sit with you and, you know, whatever will happen will happen for you type of thing. Um, because <laughs> yeah, people, because people, yeah, yeah it, it's so difficult to say this is really something you can, I'm, I'm not challenging. I'm just kind of sharing what I believe a lot of people will, will say and say, well, there's nothing physical. It's, it's almost the same way when people say, well, I can talk to your, I can communicate with your, your loved ones who have passed away um, mm -hmm. because we can't see it, we can't hear it, we can't taste it or smell it or touch it. Um, it's so difficult to prove that it's real uh, because people are very sceptical. Yeah, well, being sceptical, I think, is a good thing and being careful is something great. Mm. Um, so, yeah, don't push that side away if you've got it. But um, the funny thing with reconnective healing is that it's a frequency that is pretty tangible. So nine out of ten times when you want to uh, let people experience it, they experience it pretty fast. So if I'm with somebody, I can say, okay, will you, if you like, uh, uh, put up your hand and I'm going to uh, uh, treat you, quote unquote, a bit. And then you, people usually feel something. So their fingers are moving a bit strange or, um, they feel warmth or they, it's, it's usually something that you are aware of quite easily. Mm. Um, but still, I always say to people, I never let say, I never sell this. I always say, if it feels right, you want to have this experience, then please do. Yes. If it feels right, you, you are ready to have. Uh, 30 minutes just for yourself in which you lay down and somebody is doing something you don't understand, but you kind of feel attracted to it, uh, then then experience it. Mm -hmm. And if it feels right, perfect. Yeah. And so I never try to convince anybody or sell anything because I don't believe in that. It either feels good or it feels good to even work with me because you can like one of the things that I do, but maybe don't have a connection with me. Yes. Um, yeah, it's all possible. Okay, so and that really brings us on. Sorry, carry on. Were you going to no, say? No, I think, yeah, that it's so important that you feel good, not only, let's say, with the, the things you're going to do, uh, either it is Qigong or Reconnective Healing, but also the one you're going to work with. Yeah. And if both feel good, then please work in this case with me and otherwise uh, yes. then then don't no <laughs> yeah the choice is yours <laughs> yeah it is uh, so it it brings us nicely because you mentioned the word i don't sell this so it brings me nicely on to <laughs> the next question because um that's come up in my head because i haven't prepared questions and that is <laughs> is what you're doing uh, so it's just these two things that you do or is there anything else? 
Well, this is where I f- what I focus on. Okay. I at the moment, yes, this is what yes. I focus on. Yeah. Okay. So, is it? Have you been able to get a make a business out of this for you? Yes. Great. And that is that has not been easy. I no. have my own practice in Holland for years. Yeah. And I'm now restarting, so it's a challenging time. Is it? Yes, I bet yeah, it, is. it is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and and so, do you have a practice that people come to for the qigong? Do you do you work out of a I center? Am- no, not at the moment. That means that I am uh, starting or I'm in the process of starting a Qigong group online. Online? And I'm, yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited about it. I, um, I want to focus um, specifically on, on, on mummies, on mothers. Right. Because I feel like, mo- yeah, mothers are, like, let's say, the core core thing of the society there's mm. so many things depending on the mother yeah but basically of course it can be for any woman who wants to have more energy and and more inner balance yes but the focus um if you talk about selling things but selling has sometimes a negative feel to it but mm. i would rather say explaining it because if you say yeah, i do qigong yeah then, then yeah that's that's that, that that is nothing. So so if you if I say I work with mummies to make them feel better and have more energy, then you're you're getting more to what it is that you can actually do for somebody. Yes. So um, I'm in the process of creating that group, and um, yeah, things are going well. I I I still in the in the beginning process, so it's challenging, and I need my own practice to to stay focused and good. But that's one of the goals that I have to create an online group in which we do one video each week um, with information, uh, how, also things besides Qigong. So how do you connect to your body? How do you focus on your breath? Um, how do you focus on your body posture? All kind of little things that help you um, feel good, good inside, good with your body. And then, of course, the actual Qigong practice. And I bring all the practices back to, let's say, 15 minutes. So that it's very doable for everybody to do. So the video will be half an hour. And then I will do another live uh, in a Facebook group. So that there is a possibility to interact with me, to ask your questions. And I also want to dive in a bit deeper about daily life and daily life tools. Because if you build up your energy on one hand, you most definitely are starting to feel better. Or you're going to have benefits like you're very tired you want to go to bed but you're going to practice and then you still can enjoy your evening so that's a tangible good thing but on the other hand if you don't change anything in your daily life then sometimes we're practicing a lot but the actual shift that you're looking for are not happening and i'm talking about things like prioritizing which can be a bit tough because you can't can only say yes for so many hours in a day. Um, who do you interact with? How do people make you feel? Um, what gives you energy? What drains your energy? So we're going to go into all those subjects as well. And how does uh, it work? To- how, how does it work? So you mentioned a video. Um, mm-hmm. Do you send a video to people? Do you put it online behind a f- yeah. like a paywall? or? Yeah. 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 So I have created a Facebook group, um, which people I hope to start by the end of September. It okay. might be the beginning of October. Right. So there are not many people in the group yet. There are nobody in the group yet. But in the group, I will post the videos. And in the same group, um, I will do the Facebook lives okay. in order to make but- sure that you are connected. Yeah. So just the, the business side of it. Tell me how the, how the business sides of it, how are you going to earn money from that? Because Facebook is very public, even though you might have a private group. <laughs> so how are you, yeah, going, to, how are you going to get um, remuneration paid for this? Because I'm the one who decides who joins the group. Right. So they pay so to join the group. Yeah, they pay. Yeah, you pay a fee in order to join the group. Yeah. Great, great. Okay, got it. So they pay the fee, yeah. then they... They ha- pay the fee. That's very easy through PayPal. There are links on the website. 
Right. So you pay the fee, you join the group, and in that safe community, we can start working together and make sure that you uh, got it. You start feeling good. And then that means it can be anybody in the whole wide world who can join you in yeah. that group, as long as they've yeah. paid. And do people yeah. pay monthly or do they pay one-off fee or how does it work? They pay monthly. Right, right. So you've got like a recurring payment through PayPal or yeah, something Yeah, you've like got that. a recurring payment, yeah. yeah. And as far as the reconnected healing, um, I do have a practice here where I am. And um, I can also do that online. And I already do that online, which is... Right. Yeah, for some people, even for me in the beginning, it was hard to grasp that you can actually do something here and somebody's in the United States and then your mind is going to to take over. But I've trained myself, of course, also through Qigong, but also I've done yeah. my reconnective healing education. So I know that yeah. it works. Yeah. Have you come and across... You just do you know Lynn McTaggart? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I studied with Lynn for a little bit and I was in involved. Personally, as in, in a group setting or? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what happened was she needed, I was at one of her conferences in London and mm -hmm. I was just going to answer the point that you made about doing your reconnective healing from a long distance. Um, yeah. And you may have already read it anyway, but she she has um, inten she has a, written a book called The Intention Experiment. Um, yeah. Where I was involved with the very first group that she did it that was in preparation oh, cool. for her book, and we were in oh. in a in a university in London, and we were sending healing to three uh, of I think it was four. Let me think. Three subjects. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a uh, a plant that had um, a rubber plant that had needles in its leaves. Uh, we had um, a um, some algae in a petri dish, and yeah. a woman who had drunk like ten cups of coffee or something, and her body was very stressed with all the coffee inside of her, and so we had to send healing a very precise kind of length of time mm -hmm. to these mm -hmm. subjects. Anyway, she wrote about it. I won't, I won't tell you ha what happened. I can't remember, actually, but it all worked. Uh, but they were all wired up to equipment to mm -hmm. show what changes would happen in these subjects. Um, it was fascinating. And she continued um, with these intention experiments about healing and other intentions as well. Um, without going, because this podcast is not about me, but without going into detail, um, there was also some personal things in the family that she got involved with in sending healing intention to one of oh. our family members, which was very successful. So, yeah, I'm personally aware that you, and there's also, there's a scientist who did a lot of scientific work in terms of changing the pH in water. Uh, mm -hmm. where he put some water in a um, Faraday cage, which is like a copper cage, where no energy mm -hmm. can get in. And people mm -hmm. sat around this cage where the water was mm -hmm. and they changed the pH and it actually did work off the water. Mm -hmm. But then they sent the water across the other side of the United States and they did the same experiment about changing the mm -hmm. pH in the water and it worked again. Um, yeah. So distance... Distance doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make, yeah, because energy is everywhere. So it's just tapping into the, to the uh, let's call it the energy telephone line <laughs> to, <laughs> to get straight to the subject. So I... Yeah, but yeah. So I've, over mm -hmm. the years, have seen this. because I'm only mentioning the scientific bit because Lynn McTaggart Although she believes in all of these things and has seen these things happen, she's taken the scientific proof towards these things so that there is no doubt in people's minds that actually these things do work, although you can't feel it, see it, taste it, hear it, smell it. Uh, it does actually work. Um, so fantastic. Um, so we're going to wrap up soon, but I want to make sure that I haven't missed anything, Esther. So is there anything else that we've missed that we haven't mentioned or you haven't mentioned? 
Mm. Well, I'm thinking about everything we discussed. We discussed a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really absolutely. Lot. Really great. Oh, uh, my. Really fascinating to hear what you're up to and your knowledge on this topic is very, very deep. Um, so thank you so much. If people want yeah, to... Yeah, on the other hand, I felt like, oh, we're just getting started. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I have no idea about the time as well, but don't worry about it. We're, we're okay. I'm not in a rush, but I'm just conscious that that um I'm taking up your time. But whilst you're thinking, let's share with our listeners how people can learn more about you. Uh you've mentioned Facebook or have you got a yeah. website? Where can they find and learn more about everything that you do? Yeah. Um I've got a website which is www.soulwomen.com. And if you, <laughs> now there comes the English part. If you've got soul, and between soul and women, there is a... a hyphen. Uh, hyphen. Hyphen. Is that, hyphen. A it's streepje in het midden. A streepje is a hyphen, yeah. A hyphen. A hyphen in the middle. So wwwsoul womencom Women.com, um, yeah. Women.com, yeah. I've got a Facebook page which, which is called Be Happy Now. I will send uh, you the information maybe then then people can yeah. see it. Yeah, I'll put it in the um, show notes. Yeah. yeah, I have created, which might be uh, interesting for people, I've created a business group because we talked about doing business and, and how do you do that online, hmm. which is not easy. Um, so I created my own business group. I thought, well, let's take matters into our own hands. Mm. Um, the only thing with this business group is that um, it's absolutely not everybody's cup of tea. Let me warn you. Mm. Um, and I'm very, very strict as well because I've decided that it's going to be a bit of a heart-minded people group, which means that um, if anything we discussed doesn't ring many yes bells inside you, then you're probably not going to like the group because it's a group <laughs> that has that that feel all around. And with hard-minded people, I mean people who get that my success is your success or your success is my success. Now, the way because you... if you wouldn't... Yeah? No, the way you say that, they, do you, are you saying heart, heart or hard? Which no, way? No, heart as in your your heart that pumps your blood. Right, so that's heart with a T. So heart, it's yeah, heart, heart your with heart a T. Beat. Heart, yeah, heartbeat, heartbeat minded people, yeah, yeah, mm. not heart, as in no, heart. not heart, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so people that are coming from their heart, basically. Yeah, you can say yeah, that is the good English expression. So yeah. everybody, uh, I've got lots of people in it from the Mind Valley. I'm an ambassador for the Mind Valley that might ring a bell for some people. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so most people are or Mind Valley uh, students or are people I personally know. So if you would like to join my group, please send me an invitation. Why? Because I'm very strict. It's a very small group because I want to keep that safe, nice, um, hard, coming from your heart, heart with the team, minded people. Yes. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn, of course, Esther Pacey. So uh, if you, there's just, Probably one person called like that in the whole world. So that's easy. And um, yeah, we might even want to, if, if that's a good idea, we can even post a video about how distance healing works. It's a very short video of, I think, two, three minutes. People want to see that. Mm. And I think that's, that's where I'm basically. And the business group is called From I to We. And is that on Facebook as well? It's also also on Facebook, yes. From I to we. Yeah, so I that you don't. Oh yeah, I can see it. It says from I to we, let's connect. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, so it says this is your group. If you're a caring and loving person, is passionate about what you do, you want the other person to succeed as much as you want yourself to succeed. Okay. Yeah, because people usually don't understand. They don't, people are not wired yet in that way because mm. we're in survival modes. Yes. But it's very easy. I mean, if you're not successful with your podcast, if you ha don't put your energy and time in it, we cannot have this conversation. Correct. So the fact that you're successful is beneficial to me in this 
this case. Yeah. But if I'm having um, a great time in my life and I can put that energy into my group, then the people in my group are benefiting from my success. You see what I mean? So everything, yeah, I'm a big fan of, of owning yourself and um, understanding that everybody's success contributes to your own as well. It's a fantastic concept. It's really, really fascinating. So well done to you. Big round of applause well, from me. That sounds <laughs> amazing. And I love the way you've listed all the members as well. That's really cool. That's very, very cool how you've done that. Um, yeah, so everybody can. Uh, it's. I want to create an online next bakery feeling because if I, I know the bakery next door, then I usually go there because I know that person and I know his wife and I want his business to succeed. Mm. Um, it's the same with knowing people, but the online world is a bit big and maybe overwhelming. But yes. I know many people personally also in the group. So if you get to know each other and if you, like you and I get to know each other now, mm. if, you, if somebody comes up in your mind for Qigong or maybe reconnecting healing, you probably think about me. If I met, run into somebody and I think, hey, that might be interesting for po podcast, I think about you. So I want to create that feeling like, okay, I know what the other one is doing. There's an animal trainer and has di this and that person, lots of artists, um, people with all kinds of cool things. So yeah, if I know people, I can recommend them and refer them and the other way around. And we want that because the step from seeing advertisement and then clicking the button and actually buying can be scary because you don't know who you who you're dealing with Correct. but if you get yeah. to know me yeah in whatever way through this podcast or um in a group then it's much much it feels much comfortable to work with each other i love it so this is an invitation to people that are listening on the podcast who come from their heart um, yeah. If you want to be go from I to we, then then check that we'll put a link in the show notes anyway, um, yeah. and then people can check it out and see if they're if they if it's for them. Yeah, and send me personally a personal message because of course if you're not friends with each other on Facebook, you don't see those messages. But I make sure that I check in with those messages as yeah. well. Yeah, great. Okay. Esther, it's been really wonderful to hear your story and well, thanks. really interesting to learn more about Qigong and reconnective healing. Um, you're doing some wonderful stuff. I really hope it all takes off for you the way I hope the energy flows to where it needs to go. Let's put it that way. Yeah, that's it's probably a good, the, good intention. Yeah. yeah. Um, and hopefully... If you're ever in the UK on our conferences or anything, or, you know, let me know. We'll meet up for a cup of coffee. Um, yeah, we love that. But I've, I've clicked join your group, so maybe we can talk more in there as well. And might be interesting to share your, the podcast link in there as well, and people can have a listen. Yeah, I will definitely do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for you. joining. <laughs> and yeah, thank you for your time. And I'll speak to you soon. Okay. Take bye -bye. care. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.